Yo. Let, let me, before even I talk about the marketing element, let me just touch a bit on that issue of uh, the governance and institutional framework. Because now speaking like, um, like a, a stakeholder in the coffee, I think even before the marketing, we have an issue there. I remember in 2004, I was working abroad, and I, I was the first person to import from abroad the first container of coffee from KPCU. When KPCU was KPCU, that was in the year 2004, when Ruth Moniki was the CEO. And we've seen what has happened to KPCU over the years. By the way, and I'm looking forward to the discussion on tea in two weeks' time, as uh, His Excellency has said. You know, in tea, despite the many problems, still, some, as we say where I come from, men still go to the bar to have a beer and they sing goats at least once a month. Because KTDA still provides that framework, which it may not work very well, but at least it's there. But if you look at exactly what happened in coffee with the collapse of KPCU, it shows that let us keep our institutions, even if they're not working very well, they can be improved over time. Because now this free for all that has come is, 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 is not good for anyone. And we have been having two cartels, two layers of cartels. I, I have encountered both of them. The cartel at the higher level, you know those Muzungus, the importers, the big companies. In 2013, before I went to Parliament, I was a very good friend of, uh, as a CSR said, of the Delito Gashago. And I was actually his consultant when we were trying to fight with the, with the cartels and the frustration that he got. And by the way, because of Delito Gashago, this is a battle that personally I must win. Because we started and we tried and we saw the frustration. And they will come, I remember that time, and uh, Honorable Duga is here, Senator Duga is here. Senator Duga, you remember, when Delito Gashagu was started, uh, and yourself also, the German former Chancellor, uh, Schroeder, had to come in and see President Kibaki, just to ensure that we don't continue with the efforts that we had made to liberate our people from this. Now or later, we have opened this discussion on, on our cooperatives, which is the second layer of, uh, of, of cartels. There is no worse cartels in this sector than the cooperatives. And I want to challenge everyone, if we have to make a change, let us first of all put our money where our mouth is. Let us buy the bullet. Can we change the law to a such a way whereby the governor of a coffee county and the member of parliament from that area are automatic members of every coffee cooperative. So that you can have people who are accountable. So that you can have people who can be asked questions by Monainchi. And I'm saying this because when I became a member of parliament, I said, now I'm going to fix coffee. It's my chance. So I called my cooperatives. And one guy, he was a chair of Kambu cooperatives and also from my area. He told me, Kukula, Razima Tukule, because Ababu Sisi Sio Yai, Yai, dear two Hainam Domo, Hayazi Kukula, Kuevu Kukula, Razma Tukule. And I, I, was, I was very frustrated. But unfortunately, I couldn't do anything. What do, you tell, what do you tell a cooperative? You are a member of parliament, a cooperative is devolved, the governor has no say in that particular cooperative, the member of parliament has got no way in that cooperative. So, in this, because his Excellency has said, you have to bite the bullet now. Let us bite the bullet by showing those people who think that they own the farmer, that even a member of parliament and a governor, they also own the same farmer. So by having them in these cooperatives, so that they can be able to answer the question on behalf of the people that they represent. Otherwise, it can be very frustrating. Now as I move on now to the next issue, which is the price. The only way to fix this price is nothing but evaluation. And this is valuation in two ways. If you go to Starbucks, and I travel quite a lot, a 225 gram sachet of what they call Kenya AA, the best coffee, it goes for somewhere in the region of $22. Now do some mathematics. It means that a kilo 
of that uh, Starbucks coffee is somewhere in the region of $100, or by the current exchange rate, 14,000 shillings. If I leave you use a, use a factor of 10 to go back from that sachet to the, to the cherry, you'll find out that there's no reason, and I believe there's no reason why a kilo of coffee cannot charge minimum 1,000 shillings. Now, I believe if we do the right thing, we can be able to give 500 shillings to the farm. I believe it's possible. And I believe it's doable. That time, when I was in Parliament, I started to move, try to move a bill to say, let us not export our coffee raw. And I was fought. I was fought a lot. You remember, there was a big debate for almost six months. And you know, people want to fight you. They come up with all sorts of excuses. You know, there's a shelf life. All sorts of, uh, the same way they are frustrating the little Kashagua with all sorts of silly arguments. It's the same thing they brought. Oh, you know, the shelf life cannot go. It will go bad. You know, you have to make the coffee close to the consumer. Those are what I call, sorry for this, and I'm not racist, Muzungu arguments. And that's why me, I am focusing on emerging markets. An emerging market is not going to give me those kind of an argument. It's not, if I go to India, if I go to China, if I go to the Middle East, if I go to Indonesia, if I go to the largest market that we have, which is the rest of Africa, they're not going to start telling me, Kwamba Kahawa Itaharibika. So one, we focus on value addition, and we focus on new markets. The, the Vice President of Colombia was here the other day, and we had a meeting with the, with the Deputy President. And one thing that came clear is the number of variants or derivative products that can be able to be gotten out of coffee. Here too, Magonia, Green, the way we have done it, since independence, is the way we are doing it. Now, with the County Aggregation and Industrial Park, which I'm very passionate about, we can be able to create one value addition in the county and we will do it. Two, a county brand. So, Governor Kawera Mwangaza, because your tender is closing today, and because I believe we can uh, start operating this Kaip in six months' time, let us also start working on Meru Coffee, a distinct brand of coffee which even somebody in America or wherever they are, they will know that this is a Meru coffee. And not just coffee. Let us have Meru chocolate. And all those other variants of products that you can be able to get. So, these county aggregation and industrial parks are very important because one, the government itself, we are replacing one broker to at least a broker with some conscience, which is a government. Yeah? Because Kawira Mwangaza and myself will be asked questions by the people in Meru. Yeah, so other than just depending on brokers and those middlemen, we can be able to do something as ourselves. And I'm very, very positive that within the next one year, using these county aggregation and industrial parks, we are going to, to bend the curve on coffee, on other products, on productivity, and actually within the next one year, Monainchi will be smiling. We'll be able to put real money in people's uh, pockets. And for the international marketing, we are opening warehouses in DRC, in Dubai, in those other countries, so that even somebody from um, Kariene down here can be able to export coffee to South Korea even if they don't have a passport. Because right now, why we have a problem? Only the big shots, only the big people can be able to participate in this market. But using aggregation, which Olabu uh, Cherugoi has talked about, using the county industrial parks, using our export warehouses, we can be able to place coffee in South Korea, and that money will be able to reach somebody in Kariene, even if they don't have a passport. Deploying also uh, e-commerce, which is something else we're working on, our commodity exchange, and CSC uh, Cherugoi, I want to challenge you, let us support the commodity exchange. Let us actually assume it is funded. So that Monangi can have an option. You want to go to the Nairobi Coffee Exchange? Go. 
You want to go to the commodity exchange, go. So that you have some sort of competition and you're able to give value to, 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 to the farmer. We have now uh, just signed an agreement with CNM for the next one year uh, and, and using this partnership with CNN, for the first time, you'll be able to see Kenya Coffee on CNN starting from next week so that we are able to reach everybody. We create that uh, cool effect on our coffee uh, through international marketing. Uh, but ultimately, as I conclude, we, I can't do that alone as a ministry. Rintuli cannot do that alone and Cherugui cannot do that alone. When we went to Nanyuki in January, we established what we are calling the value chain approach. This value chain approach is whereby we all work together. We don't operate in silos. We don't say, I am agriculture. That's why you found me and Rintuli are going out together. Next time, Rintuli and Cherugui will go and attack something else together. They were here in Meru. Me and Cherugui will go and do something together. So, Your Excellency, I also want to request you to help us to strengthen this value chain approach because it needs some coordination at your level, at the level of the Prime Cabinet Secretary because we need to align. We need to, you need to help us to, to have this working together. Uh, our budget now this year, uh, the 20, 23, 2024, for the first time we have used this value chain approach. Whereby we are saying it doesn't matter. I have heard um, reports that we have got 260 billion within the value chain. Personally, it is not in my ministry. But it doesn't matter. If my brother literally has it, and it, he produces, and I will create the market. But the most important thing is to have a coordinated approach. Because as a deputy president has said, we must be that generation that is going to fix this issue for once and for all. And because we are not going to perform. That's what I'm saying. The only auditor who is going to audit our performance is a Mwanainchi at the ballot. So we'll be given time. If you don't perform, Mwanainchi has to be a kiboko. But I'm sorry, in these plans, my only institution I can report to is, other than my president, my deputy president, is parliament, which has got an oversight role and the voter at the end of our term. So I'm saying this because at the institution finance bill does not pass what are the manner. Where are the manner after five years? So they go Monainchi after that. Because Monainchi is not stupid. They can see what we are doing. We need to be given time. We put all these plans into, into place so that by five years to uh, four years from now, because one year is almost gone, then we have been, uh, we'll be asked a question. When you guys took over government, the farmer was in Meru was getting 40 shillings. How much was a farmer getting by 2027? And I'm not saying that it's going to eat until 2027. But I think that we need sufficient space to put all these plans together. When you number one, you can't use the car. 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 You can't use the they don't know about the trees and all that kind of thing. So please, let them give us time now. We put all these efforts together. We work together.